Uh, my name is Ong Pang Yen. I bring you greetings from uh, Malaysia. I'm an engineer by profession. I'm here today to share with you how a township developer in Malaysia has embraced all 17 of the SDGs and is doing its part to help promote the agenda of the SDG back home in Malaysia. Because of time constraint, I would only touch on the environmental aspects of the SDGs. Yeah? <laughs> Well, I think uh, we all know the uh, world population has grown tremendously over the past century. And with that, uh, there's more uh, deforestation happening because we need more land for agriculture. There are more mining activities taking place to support the need for economic growth and simply to build more houses to, to house the increased uh, populace. And with a rapid urbanization, inevitably, the focus today is on sustainable city. It, in Malaysia alone, uh, since the 1970s, it was estimated that about 400 square kilometers of land were converted to build new cities and for urban expansion. Um, it is unfortunate that uh, this trespassing of urbanization is happening uh, despite an increasing abundance in the wasteland created by economic activities such as tin mining in Malaysia. Malaysia used to be the largest tin exporter in the world. And it is very unfortunate, uh, you know, that uh, after taking so much from the belly of the earth, uh, this land are left abandoned. Uh, this is simply because to rehabilitate this land, it is usually very costly and prohibitive. And so they are usually left as wasteland. But can we do better? What you see here today on the screen is a map, uh, is a photograph of uh, what used to be a tin mine in Selangor in Malaysia. And this is what it is today. Another angle, uh, this is a tin mine. Uh, nothing grows there because of the mining process. Every nutrient has been washed out. You can't even find a uh, an earthworm living there. And this is what it is today. More than 25,000 trees have been transplanted and an ecosystem restored. Communities built and the wasteland transformed into a wonderland. This is how it looks uh, today if you come to Malaysia, Sunway City. On the environmental aspect, just as you know, nations came together for the 2016 uh, Paris Agreement, uh, committing to take concrete steps to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Likewise, cities must also do uh, the same. And this is where the model of an integrated mixed-use township play a very important role in uh, cutting down CO2 emission. In a mixed-use development where one can live, learn, work, play, do their daily chores at the same uh, township without a need to commute beyond the township, CO2 emission is very much reduced. The average uh, car mileage traveled by a family living in a township like this is very much lower than those who are living in dedicated uh, residential uh, precincts or suburbs. And then comes the infrastructure. In, the, in Sunway City, we have uh, a, a network of elevated covered walkways, very comfortable, very safe for people to walk. So once you are in the township, there's no need to move about by cars. And we have electric bus elevated as well. As far as uh, renewable energy is concerned, uh, we have solar panels on rooftops. Uh, at the moment, we are generating about 2% of what we require for the township. The target is 5%. Uh, we treat our own water localization. We treat our own water. That negates the need to pump water from distant reservoir to the township. And these uh, initiatives or these uh, actions alone uh, is equivalent to planting about 300,000 trees, you know, in terms of the CO2 emission that is uh, being uh, reduced. This township is built on what is uh, known as a build own operate uh, model. But I must say that the ownership model, even though it is very advantageous because we have control, it was not by choice back then. Because back then, bankers and investors would usually just shy away, asking, you know, uh, can't you find an easier piece of land to build your township? Uh, so it was a very difficult uh, time back then because gearing is very high. 
a lot of investment into uh, education, into uh, healthcare, and all the other retail, leisure, hospitality industries, these have got very long gestation period, a very long payback period. So when two recessions hit the country, the group almost went under. Uh, but uh, thankfully, uh, because of the perseverance of the founder and the chairman of the group, uh, because of the values that he has, he has adopted, integrity, humility and excellence, uh, the group managed to convert uh, some stakeholders into shareholders. And so there's no looking back after these two uh, very tough uh, recessions. But cities in the future are not uh, built because of the infrastructure that we have. It's not buildings and roads and bridges. It must be built around its communities for it to be sustainable. And there are two communities that we focus on in uh, Sunway City, healthcare professionals, uh, academics and uh, researchers. Uh, this is very important because uh, we, we, we not only uh, need to do what is right, but we also must learn to do the right things right. And uh, these two communities would uh, help us in this uh, regard. So we have the Jeffrey Sachs Center in Sunway City. Uh, we have uh, research uh, with top universities uh, in the world. It is to be a living laboratory, and it is to be, we aspire to be a center, a regional center of excellence for our community. The call to action is to challenge government and developers to consider building on non-arable, <coughs> degraded land. Imagine if 10% uh, of uh, urban expansion or cities are built on non-arable and degraded land. What if 20% are being built on such land? We should reclaim and rehabilitate land. We need to translate awareness into concrete actions. Uh, just last week, I was in Bangkok with a group of uh, uh, asset managers and fund managers, and they're all talking about ESG, responsible investment. That's a very good thing. You know? Awareness must be translated into uh, concrete and affirmative action. Uh, finally, uh, we need partners because there's still so much that we can leverage on one another, so much that we can learn from another to achieve uh, the goals, and that's why we are here together in the network. Uh, I would like to leave you with this quote uh, by the founder and chairman who made uh, this transformation possible in Malaysia. Achieving the SDGs is not the responsibility of governments alone. It requires the commitment of all sectors of society, the private sector, academia, civil society, and every single individual. We are all in this together. With that, I thank you.